Fishheads, what is going on? Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates, and this is yet another pink spray session. I did a lot of videos um, when I was going through all of the hinkles that I had. So this is the last hinkle for a while. There's more stuff coming up, but I really need to kind of mix it up for you guys. I'm sure you have seen plenty of hinkles right now. You're going to notice that I'm doing a very copious, heavy base coat here on top of the white. I'm adding some bone, and it is that Tim Gore's Bloodline from Createx. I don't want a... Um, a white white background on this on this base so I'm just using up what's left in the cup and what you don't see on camera is that this stuff is gonna gas out I'm gonna give it plenty of time to dry I didn't heat set it I just kind of left it alone for about 35 minutes because I was doing other stuff in the office but hey this is gonna be faded bluegill Let's paint something cool today. So now we're moving into some Liquitex Gold. I've been really geeking out on this metallic stuff. It just adds more of a natural quality, more of a pearlescence to the body of a fish. And it turns it from just a flat surface into a almost animated moving surface, especially when the glimmers of light hit these fish in the water. So I've been trying to show you guys as best I can on some of the shorter stuff, but um, it really does shine and it shines very well in sunlight or in the water. This is some fluorescent sunburst and it's probably the boldest color I'm going to use on here. I'm going to put just a little bit on the throat for you guys. Uh, this pattern particularly is was asked to be faded and dulled out. Um, Sam did not want bright, bold colors on this at all because most of the stuff that he's fishing in Texas, this is another one for Sam, it's going down Texas, the water has got lots of stain in it. Um, not super, super muddy, but stained up to where the fish, especially at any depth, are going to look more faded because they just don't see the light. It's not breeding time for these guys, although bluegill, by nature, will breed a few times a year. Um, especially in warmer climates where it doesn't get as cold. In Texas, yeah, it freezes. Um, they do get some ice, and they've had some crazy weather the last couple of winters that I can remember just seeing footage from down there from other anglers and people that live in Texas. So, But I'm kind of bouncing around the, uh, the yellow, orange, gold spectrum right now, trying to keep it muted, and this is the, uh, the same yellow, almost a pastel yellow, that I have been painting for a little while. There's been a few uh, thread pin that have gotten this particular shade of yellow. And this is one that I've mixed up and basically it is an opaque, just a standard opaque yellow with white blended down until it's just super happy and faded and pastel-like. Same goes with this uh, opaque sky blue going to add just a little bit to the gill plates at the bottom of those cheeks. You just want to hint, you don't want to go crazy with any of this stuff, especially if you have a client that wants a natural faded pattern. So we're just laying this on. My PSI is probably running around 15 on this. It's a big difference from what you heard at the beginning of this video where I was just like blasting paint on there. And I really don't care. Some people are like, ah! It's too much. It's you know going too fast. There's too much overspray. That's what the fan is for. Uh, I'm trying to lay even coats on this stuff, and especially from a production standpoint, just quicker if it comes out a little bit faster. And people have been asking me, how do I keep my needle from drying out? I just um, every single color, I'm washing out the cup. And I'm flushing it, not necessarily back flushing it, because one of the things that you'll notice with back flushing is it will go into places on your airbrush you don't necessarily want it to go to. Uh, and it's a little bit more difficult to clean out. So I just shoot straight through with water and then follow that up with either alcohol or lacquer thinner, depending on what kind of paints I'm using. A lot of the times it's lacquer thinner. Uh, and then I'll just give it a quick flush out with... Um, 
you can you can use Windex without ammonia. You can use um, the airbrush cleaners that they give you. Really, that's your preference. But whatever you're using, just make sure that it comes out of your cup um, and flushes thoroughly through, and doesn't eat and and help deteriorate your paintbrush cup and your needle. So this is just um, I think it was from an old laundry bag, and you'll notice that I didn't wrap it because if you hold it still. And just you're not blasting paint you can keep that really really good and get uh, get a good tight mesh with the paint hitting the mesh so it doesn't always have to be a wrap and I don't know if the, the camera is picking this up but you can really see it um, and then I'm adding super transparent paint over the top of what I threw down. And I'm going to show you guys what that looks like now. And that's, that's just a loose wrap. So if you're not blasting paint at an incredibly high PSI, you can get that to fall. If you're just doing, like you're not wrapping the entire bait. I wouldn't wrap the entire bait on a hinkle anyways because it's scaled. It's kind of like the bull shads. So it's not going to work out really well. But you can do the smooth parts of it not the neck scales like Johnny says you can't do the neck scale I mean you can and I do but not not on stuff like this now this is um, this is something that I cut and I used my Cricut to do it um, just found a pattern that I liked and cut it up with my Cricut I've got a Cricut Air 2 that I use for some of the stenciling now you guys ask what percentage of stencil is mine and what percentage of stencil is purchased and it's these days probably 50 50 maybe swinging 60 percent the other way of purchase just out of convenience so i used to cut all of my own i simply don't have the time to do that and there are really awesome places out there that you can go for resources like russ allen like brian best like you can even find stuff on amazon cedar creek outdoors has got a really good selection of, of stencils. Um, you just have to look, you just have to do the work. And I know that there's tons of links in my description for just all sorts of stuff. So just find it, do a little research. It's kind of fun finding some cool stuff that maybe nobody else is using. But this is, yeah, this is something that I just popped on the Cricut and said, hey, that looks really good. Let me go ahead and run that out there. So this is, I got this paint, um, I like Jacquard, but I got this because it said sneaker paint, and it's really not sneaker paint. I mean, it's just normal, regular airbrush paint, but it was advertised as sneaker paint because I do that too. Every once in a while, I'll do a project for somebody. Um, but I really love the military olive drab green, and I'm just putting a pop of color into the top of the cheeks at the very tip of the gill plate right behind the eyes there, just kind of fading it back down the spine area at the top. Not, not real, everything that I'm doing is transparent and everything that I'm doing is super light. There's that Pearl Starship white. That helps because it's not a true opaque, it is a pearl. So that kind of helps mute down the colors. You still have the integrity of the pattern, but it kind of drops them back a little bit. And I'm just covering the entire thing, probably around 20 PSI. And moving into a little bit more color, I'm going to drop this behind the gill plates and at the tail. Just a couple key places where you would see that. It looks like I've got a little bit of light bleed, light leak from the, uh, the bright lights overhead. But you can see I'm just barely, barely moving the needle on that. Not putting much in at all. Because again, if, if your clients are asking for something that's faded, give it to them. Um, I used to be known, and I still am. I still, I, I, I don't get near the chance that I used to get to paint some really cool bold stuff. Um, I'm missing that, so I'm gonna try and do more of that here in the in the coming as we as we uh, <laughs> and and I'm in my head because I know I'm saying this as we're going into show season and it gets absolutely insane.
during show season. It's just production, production, production with Bullshad. Um, but I am going to make every effort to try and get some cool stuff that you haven't seen me do in a while out in publication. Um, obviously, I'm having a blast now that I've figured out that I can just chill, sit in my home studio, and drink a margarita and talk to you guys in a voiceover. That's always fun. Um, but yeah, it's I'm just figuring out ways to make this work because I have really, really enjoyed the last 12 years on YouTube. I can't believe it's been 12 years on YouTube. But I'm just, uh, this is a little bit of detailed black magenta and very light, very, I probably even put some reducer in this. And then we've got some white that's going to help fade the bottom out. The brush technique. And I'm kind of demonstrating what I'm doing here. But I'm just taking an almost dry fan brush, just an artist's fan brush. I probably picked it up at Blick or you can get them at Hobby Lobby. It has got a really great selection of paint brushes. Um, go with a larger size fan if you're going to be doing swim baits that have scales like Bullshad or like Hinkle. And then there's a few others out there. Um, but you just basically you dip it in either white or black as a contrast color and then just about dry it off. You don't want lots of wet paint loaded on your brush when you're doing this. And you're just accenting the tips of the scales on scaled baits like this. And I'm just really brushing towards, I'm using the direction of the scaling and I'm brushing against that just to get the tips right and then on a couple other places I'm gonna run and pull that off if there's any places I'm just using a just a damp brush there to get any of that off that I didn't want and you have to do that while that's still wet so if there's a little bit of over that you just don't it's like ah that shouldn't be there it's too white and it's in a place it doesn't need to be just as long as the rest of the bait was dry before you go into colors you can just pull it off with a little bit of water no problem at all unless it's a lacquer then it's a little trickier but you can see now I have a little black because there are little small spots on bluegill usually towards their back and their spine where you just want a tiny bit. You don't want to overkill it. You just want to come in and give the illusion of depth in the scales. So this is it so far. We've done white and then we've done some bone as a base color. We've put on some very light coats of the powder yellow, a little bit of green from that jacquard. We've gone through some purples and just a little bit of sky blue. And we've got that fluorescent sunburst on the chest where you would normally see it. But it's all very faded out. And what you'll see here, and, and it's tricky, um, the way this bait looks straight on if you're looking at the it, just the side of it is different than if you look at it at an angle so as this moves because you've done different things with the scales and with with depth here that will kind of move in the water which is pretty cool that's what it's supposed to do it's it's a trick of the eye but it's still nonetheless that's what it does and going back to the scaling, just hold your hand still, and there you have it. And as long as you do that, you're going to get a clean line every single time. And we're, you're noticing we're dropping layers of this scaling. 
into this as well because we did some lighter layers at the beginning of the video. Now we need to do that ear flap that all bluegill and sunfish are notorious for. Even black crappie have just the tiniest black spot. How's it going? Good. This is me talking to the FedEx guy. I Just let me know. Um, at this point in the video, we're almost through it. We've got maybe six minutes left, and we're going to put some eyes on and do some, some cool little tricks here towards the end. Nothing super fancy on this one, but let me know what you think of the voiceovers. Um, I, I'm trying to hit all of the high points that I would normally be hitting as we go through. Um, one thing that I do like a lot about the voiceovers is that I can do it any time of the day and I can drop all of the machine noise like my air compressor firing off and the sound of the hiss of the airbrush. I can kind of drop that into the background and give you what I believe to be clearer vocals. So we're just refreshing that blue a little bit here because it really got faded out. And I did want to make that a key attribute in the cheeks of this. So yeah, let me know. Um, this is, maybe, I've done maybe a half dozen voiceovers with spray sessions. If you like the format, um, by all means, please tell me. I'm enjoying doing this and it gives me a little bit more freedom. I'm not locked down to the spray veg. Um, and you guys are getting more content. So hopefully it's a win-win. I'm kind of seeing it that way. But if you guys have any things that you don't like, any cons that you're seeing, you know, I don't want just the pros and tell, don't tell me I'm great. If there's things that you would like to see or me do differently or different things that maybe I could do better, by all means please. I'm always, and I have always been, open to constructive criticism. As she sips her margarita on a Sunday evening. Went to a Braves game today. Um, played the Nationals. So, real time, this is 825, me editing this video and doing a voiceover. And this video was shot three-ish, three, four weeks ago. So, I'm going through voiceovers in various various um, spray sessions that I've had kind of in the pipe for several weeks, if not more. So it's just I got sick of not filming video, so I've been filming just about everything I've been doing. And the one downside to this is that you guys are getting the videos where you know, it's what whatever I'm doing at the moment is going to be the videos. Now, I've got a close-up here because I'm attempting, and I don't know if I completely buy into the way this turned out on a Hinkle because of the scales, but I've, I've always done, gosh, for 10 years now, I've always done that little white spot under the ear flap on these, but on the, on the scaled baits, it's kind of tough to do. Now on the bull shad, uh, and also I think if, if uh, Hinkle had actual bluegill with the ear flap built in like the bull shad does on the bullgill, it'd probably be a little bit easier because um, I would imagine that would be a smoother part of the bait. Um, just, just my guess. And Hinkle, if you're out there, by all means, tell me if you would do that, if you would put the ear flap on a on a bluegill-ish bait that would be smooth and not scaled. So, just curious. But anyways, we're doing the best we can with the scaled baits. It's a little bit rough edged, but it's still, it's still got the job done. So now I've picked some gold red eyes, not super red, like smallmouth red eyes, or like breeding bass eyes, but that goldish, yellow, orangish color bluegill eye. And now we're having even more fun. I went into detailing with this one because I really wanted to accent some of the tips of the scales because that I think is one of the biggest strong suits of the Hinkle Bates is that he really got detailed with how these were carved. 
so the masters were just real they were done really well um, for me personally it's a little heavy for me to throw um, but they they are your typical beautiful slow wide glide um, the V cut and you just you just slow roll these it's so West Coast it's awesome um, there are so many different styles out there um, and you either like them or you don't but yeah I've never had a problem with these swim and I like the way the joints are put together too like that's really neat like there's so many cool things about these baits and it's nice to actually not just do bull shad a lot of people ask me that too like hey do you paint anything that's not bullshit yeah all the time all the time I do take customer orders sometimes I think the longest I've done for turnaround time has been almost a year and that's just, that's just when I'm swamped with contract work um, like I'm getting ready to finish up some baits that have been on my bench that I just found the boxes of and that happens too because I work in a really tiny studio uh, at bullshad so stuff gets piled up and, and moved and sometimes it's in Mike's office because it comes in and like we, we all get customer boxes so this was one of those things where I've got like three pieces that I'm furiously finishing up because the date on it was like September of last year and I'm like oh my god and I'm sure my customers are like oh my god <laughs> what is she doing with my baits um, so you guys are going to see that too anyways I wanted to thank you so much we have reached the end of this video and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day wherever you are on the planet. I will see you on the next one. So cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates. Peace.